All right, if you've been following me at all, you know that I've been flying the three-channel Tiny Trainer Poly Wing for about three months now. I have been practicing quite a bit, and I think I'm getting good at it, and I think I'm ready to move up to four-channel. Before I built my sport wing, though, I wanted to look into some RC simulators and try it out on the PC before I built it myself. Uh, and as well as I figured in the future, if I want to build uh, some other planes, I'll know, I'll have the simulator to know what they're supposed to feel like before I build them and fly them myself. So I started looking into the simulators and after review or the several reviews and research, I decided on Aerofly RC. Uh, I know it's open source, it's on Steam, uh, it's the cheapest of the upper end ones. And I actually found a couple of uh, experienced pilots who had uh, tried several of them and they felt uh, Aero RC was the most accurate. Although they all have great reviews. If you look it up, they all, you know, have good reviews. So uh, I just kind of, that kind of like tilted me a little bit more. I was already leaning that way, but that helped me. Uh, so in any case, uh, I started looking into the dongle and of course the Spectrum dongle is $45, $50, which was wow for me. So I started looking into Hobby King Orange and I found that they have a, a dongle as well that's DSMX compatible. The only thing is I did not know if I could use my Spectrum RC, my Spectrum transmitter with the orange dongle with Aerofly RC. So I started looking around for somebody who said, yes, I've done it. It works and that kind of thing. I looked all over. I could not find anything of anybody saying, I actually, I say, I'm think of, about it. I found one video on YouTube, but it was in a foreign language, so I really didn't know what it was talking or what it was saying. So I just, in the end, bit the bullet and I ordered the Orange RC dongle and the, um, and I downloaded Aerofly RC8. So I am now here to tell you that this plus this plus this will work okay and I'm about to prove it to you I will show you how to set it up uh, and uh, that's it let's go check it out so the first thing you want to do is set up a new model in your transmitter okay we're gonna go into model select as you can see I already have one called simulator I will build a new one or add a new model so that you guys can see how it's done uh, so we're gonna add a new model do you want to create a new model yes create okay so we have a new model name Okay, so we'll just call this SIM2, and okay, so now that we have our new model ready, we can bind, we can get ready to bind it to the dongle. Okay, next you want to plug the dongle into your USB port without pressing the button. You should then get a device setup window like this on your screen, depending of course on which version of Windows you have. It will then end up in a window like this. And just to double check, you can go into your control panel, look up devices and printers, and you should see an icon like this. The next step is to unplug the dongle from your USB drive. Press and hold the bind button on the side while you reinsert it back into the USB drive. It should begin flashing, indicating it's ready to be bound to your transmitter. So if you have Spectrum, you know all you need to do is press, hold down the bind button and press the power button. And it will automatically bind.
Okay, and it's ready to go. Notice the dongle has stopped flashing and turned solid. That means it is now ready to go. Okay, now that it's bound, I can now shut off the transmitter. Okay, and notice how the dongle goes out, the light goes out. Okay, let's leave it there. As soon as I turn it back on, the light comes back on, indicating it is um, connected to the transmitter. Okay, without shutting off your transmitter or removing the dongle, open Aerofly. Uh, then you go to Controller tab. And notice that only my mouse is listed here. If you do not see USB DSMX listed here, then you need to go down to Scan for New Controllers. Okay, click that. And it's looking for our device. And here it has found my device. So I'm going to click on it. Press Configure. And here you see it listed. And I can choose between gamepad, joystick, or a TX transmitter. So I'm going to take the transmitter, of course, and click Next. And now this is the first of the five calibration windows. So... Okay, so once you've reached the screen, it's going to ask you to move all your sticks and all their axes to their fullest. It's going to ask you to check all the switches. It doesn't record all the switches, but you want to just check them all and it records some of them. Okay, so once you've done that, it's going to ask you, do you want to correct it? If you did something wrong, you can go back correct. Uh, if you're good, you press accept. Okay, so now it's asking you to center all of your sticks in the middle. So I'm going to line everything up. That's good. This one's auto-centered, so that's good. So uh, all my switches, my trims, everything's automatically in the middle. So I'm going to press next. Okay, so it's going to ask you to move this stick up and then over. And then it's going to ask you to move the right stick up and then over. So I'm already in mode 2, so I'm going to leave it in mode 2, which is, of course, this is throttle, and this is yaw, and then this is uh, rudder, and this is aileron. So I'm going to leave it there, and we're going to go to next. Okay, so here you can um, assign extra flaps and retractable. I don't need any of that right now, so I'm going to press finish. Okay. So everything's good, so now I'm going to press OK. Now if you want to fly 4 channel, you're ready to take off using your transmitter. But if you're a beginner and you want to fly 3 channel first, you need to go back to controller tab, down to assign controls advanced, and you see this screen here, you see we have 4 channel, aileron, rudder, elevator, and throttle. Our aileron is on our X axis, so we want to deselect it. And then here you see rudder is on our X rotation. We want to move it to X axis. And now we are down to three channels. We have rudder, elevator, and throttle. So now I press save. And now I'm ready to fly using three channel. So I added this little display up here in the corner that shows you your transmitter stick movements. Uh, it's on custom because it's three channel. It's notice here the rudder though is still registering on the left hand side. And then the elevator is uh, still on the same side. And of course a throttle is on the other side. And watch the rudder, you can see now is moving. And the elevator. And the left side doesn't do anything now. Okay, so let's go for a test flight. Sorry about the focus, it keeps hopping between the transmitter and the screen.
And I crashed. Well, there you have it. All right, just a couple of things. Um, make sure in your model that you shut off the timer. That uh, is annoying if you don't remember to do that. Uh, and also, I have used throttle cut and dual rates. I programmed, the, programmed them into the model on my transmitter, but I do use them. I can use them in game. I can shut the throttle off with a, with a flip of the switch. And uh, I, was, I was switching between low and high rates. Uh, so that's uh, beyond that. I haven't tried too much experimenting, but uh, that is a cool thing. I think so anyways uh, If you've been looking into getting this combination and you weren't sure there you go So uh, now you can do it. So hopefully this helps some of you out. All right, that's it. See you next time Thanks for watching